Hi, today we are here at Scandatech. We'll show you how to replace the battery in the iPhone 5S and 5C. We'll be using a 5S in this video, but the 5C looks very much alike the 5S, and the battery removal process is identical. Let's begin by taking a look at the battery kit with the included tools. So we'll go ahead and open this up. And we have a thank you inside the box here. Just keep opening the different layers here. Now inside here, we'll start with this. We have a pentalobe or torx screwdriver for removing the screws in the bottom of the iPhone. We have a plastic pry tool. We have another plastic pry tool, a spudger pry tool. We have a tweezers and we have a screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, which will be used for some of the internal part removal. And as we go down through the layers here, we also have a suction cup tool to assist with opening the LCD screen. And we have a battery designed for the iPhone 5C and 5S inside an electrostatic discharge safe plastic bag. We have several adhesive strips for reinstalling the battery. So now that we have everything out, let's go ahead and start the process. We want to begin by explaining that the 5S and the 5C battery replacement is slightly more difficult than the iPhone 5 or any previous model's battery replacement. As with any hardware replacement, complications can arise, but if you're following this guide and our text guide with pictures, which can be found on our website, with patience we'll walk you through the process step by step. We recommend listening to the whole video without skipping any steps as we highlight potential difficulties. So where you want to start is turn off your iPhone, make sure that it's powered down, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use this Torx screwdriver that came with the kit and we're going to remove the two screws in the bottom right here. So let's go ahead and remove these screws right here. And pull the screw out. Remove this screw next. Pull the screw out and set them off to the side. Next what we're going to want to do is take the suction cup tool and we're going to want to put it right above the home button and press down. The reason we want to stay above the home button is because it doesn't seal very well if you're right over the home button so you want to stay as close to the home button as possible. And as you start pulling up, give it a little tension and look under here to see if it's starting to separate right here. Sometimes if the phone's in your pocket and you get a lot of lint in between the layers, sometimes it comes apart harder. So if it's stuck, what you can do is you can try to put the tweezers in between the layers right here. Make sure to stick the tweezers between the plastic frame and the metal back assembly and not between the glass and the plastic frame. So as you're pulling up with the suction cup tool, as it starts to separate here, if you're having trouble separating here, very carefully pry right in here with the tweezers. Right above this speaker here, you're going to want to stick the tweezers in right here and you can carefully pry up right there and assist with the suction cup tool as you're prying up and leave the tweezers right in there and if you need to you can work your way around. Now be very very careful this is a very important part right here. Don't pull too hard right here because the home button flex ribbon cable can tear and if it's replaced the touch ID will not work. It has to be with the original flex cable for the touch ID to work so this is a very important part of the phone that if it's not done correctly that you will lose a very important function of your phone. So be very careful not to pry too hard here and to pull too far. So just keep working your way around Keep the tweezers in here as you work your way around. So if you have it pulled up like about that far, what you can do is you can wiggle it carefully and then you can set it off to the side like this. There's enough slack in this cable underneath for the Touch ID that you can get this exposed. Now iPhone 5S users are the only ones that have to worry about this cable. The iPhone 5C users don't have this cable. So this is the part right here that we're talking about on the flex cable. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use the tweezers and we're going to carefully go in here and twist it a little bit and it pops right off. Then we want to use our plastic pry tool and go in here and we want to remove the connector right there. And then we can be free to lift the screen up all the way. Now don't lift it more than 90 degrees at this point. Now while you're still holding the screen at a 90 degrees, what we recommend is that you remove the screws out of the battery plate and remove the battery connector. So let's begin by using the Phillips screwdriver and removing these two screws in the battery plate. As you remove these two screws, make sure to set them off to the side and then you grab this battery plate and set it right off to the side with your screws. And next what we're going to want to do is use our plastic pry tool and we're going to want to pry up on the battery connector right here and disconnect it. We're going to want to get our connector out of the way. Next what we're going to want to do is grab our new battery 
get it out of the packaging. Then we're gonna wanna take our phone here. We're gonna wanna set our new battery on top of the old battery to test it. So while you're still holding the screen with one hand, go ahead and connect your new battery connector in there. You can go ahead and just lay the screen down on here. Let's remove this suction cup tool if we haven't already. Then let's go ahead and turn the phone on and test the battery to see if it works. So in this case, we have a half a battery. Now if your battery is completely discharged, it could take up to 15 minutes of charging before anything shows up on the screen. Make sure that the battery is at least charged to 3% before removing the charger and then turn off the phone, disconnect it, and let's remove the new battery. In some cases, the iPhone 5S can freeze when the home button cable is disconnected. If this happens, turn the phone off, keep the new battery plugged in, and reconnect the home button flex cable that we had removed with the spudger earlier, and then get the phone to power up again, and then power it down, and then disconnect this cable again here. Then once we know that the battery is working, what we're gonna do is use our spudger pry tool again. We're gonna disconnect the battery and we're gonna remove it out of here. Now while we're still holding the screen at a 90 degrees, we have three options. You can keep holding the front assembly at a 90 degree with one hand while proceeding to remove the battery with the other hand, but it's quite difficult to do that. The next thing that you can do is you could, you could have a book setting here and you can lean it against the book as long as you don't stretch these flex cables too much down in here, but what we recommend is that you just remove the screen altogether. And so we'll go ahead and show you how to do that step. Removing the front assembly altogether is usually the best option. It, although it can be a little tricky to disconnect and reconnect the touch LCD and the front camera proximity sensor cable that are here. It's usually the most common way to go because it's easier to use two hands, remove the battery and reinstall it. And so what we're gonna do is, and we're gonna take the Phillips screwdriver and we're gonna remove these four screws right here in this plate. So let's start by removing this screw right here. Next, remove this screw. So next, take the tweezers and remove this plate right here. Then we're gonna take our plastic spudger tool and we're gonna go ahead and remove this connector right here. This one comes first. And then this connector right here comes next. Then this connector down here comes last. So those three, and then the whole assembly comes off just like that. Now, if for some reason you happen to disconnect this connector right here, just go ahead and refasten it by pushing down. You can hear it click down. You also want to check it once you reconnect these rest of these connectors. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to find the adhesive strip down here, this black part right under the battery, and we want to use the tweezers and we want to carefully unfold this. What we want to do is we want to cut this black strip right in half. There's two strips that run along underneath the battery here adhesive strips and this part here connects them so we want to cut this right in half just very carefully down in there you can see where it, if you look down in there you can see where it turns from black to white and we just need to cut down to through this black part so go ahead and cut through there with a scissors or a knife or something very carefully I'm going to use this plastic pry tool to show you what I want to point out here there's two adhesive strips running under here like I'd mentioned previously now we want to be careful there's a volume button right here that runs under the battery towards the top part here. So we wanna stay away from there. And also, we do not wanna pry off this side with the motherboard here at all. We wanna stay away from this. So what we recommend, what we found that works the best, if you are able to apply a little heat, it usually helps if you have a hair dryer or something. I just have this hair dryer here or a heat gun of something. And what we can do is we can flip the phone over and heat right here on this side, not on this side where the logic board is, but just on this side where the battery is. We just want to heat and you want to heat like five to 10 seconds at a time. If it's too hot to touch, then it's too hot. So you want to have it not to be too hot to your touch. And once you heat it up, you need to remove this very quickly because it cools off very quickly. So after we've applied some heat with the hair dryer, what we're going to need to do is take the tweezers and turn it upside down, use the top part of this tweezers, and leverage a little bit on this side before you even start pulling any adhesive loose. Leverage under here and just keep working a little bit. Try to work a little bit. Now be mindful of this volume flex cable that runs on the top here, so don't get too close to there, but you can leverage all from this side. Don't from this side at all because of the motherboard, but you can leverage from this side before you even start trying to pull this out. So what we need to do first is start on the left side here with this left tab. You wanna grab it with your thumb and your index finger. And what we recommend is pulling on this side away from the headphone jack. As you can see, this is coming loose. 
But watch this headphone jack here because it has a delicate flex cable on the top and you don't want to drag this across and mess it up. And then we can kind of pull at an angle like this and you can just keep working your way down and just keep pulling. It gets really long sometimes so you just want to keep pulling until the whole thing comes out. Now that this side is quite loose from prying it and working the adhesive out, let's grab this side and let's pull. And you can see mine tore off right away. Now no matter how hard you try, sometimes these just tear off. So what we need to do is we need to keep applying heat from the back side and keep leveraging this up. Stay away from this section up here as I mentioned before, just keep prying from the left side here. And just keep working your way around. And then it came out. Now as you can see, this adhesive is kind of messy. But what we need to do is we need to try to apply a little heat or something and get this, get rid of this adhesive strip right here. Now that we have the adhesive all cleaned up out of there, what we're going to want to do is we're going to take our adhesive strips that came in the kit and we want to peel this back. And this has adhesive on one side for now. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to bend this up at a 90 degrees. And we're going to want to set it in here all the way down against the bottom here where it's sticking up. And then we just want to lay this down, press it down so it sticks really well. And then once that's all set, we can just grab this pink tab and pull this up and release the adhesive strip. So then we're ready for reassembly. We're going to grab our new battery. Now as you set the battery down in here, try to keep it so it clears here for sure. Make sure that it clears up here for sure and try to keep it to this side of the phone as much as you can. So it gives a little more room here by the logic board. So we just grab our battery, set it right down in there like that. Press down firmly so the adhesive sticks well. Now at this point we're not going to connect the battery. We're going to go ahead and reconnect the screen. So if you ended up using the books and you're not holding on to your screen, the screen isn't leaned up against the books, you can skip this step and go ahead to this next step. But if not, then what you're going to need to do is reattach the LCD screen. So the way we're going to accomplish that is we're just going to set it right down like this. We're going to go ahead and start with this connector right here. Do it in opposite order of when we took it apart. You can kind of feel the connectors pop in when you push down with your fingers. Some of them snap louder than others. Check all the connectors here, this one back here and this one here, if they potentially became loose. Then what we're going to do is while we're holding it, we're going to grab our tweezers and go ahead and set this shield down here. And we're going to go ahead and put our screws back in. It's usually easiest to start with one of these bottom ones because this tends to be up in the air a little bit on the top part until you get these in. So now while still holding on to your screen with one hand, it is time to reconnect the battery connector. So we'll go ahead and just connect it by pushing down with our finger. You can hear it snap in and it feels really good. Then we're going to take our tweezers and set our shield down in here. And we're going to go ahead and put these two screws back in using the Phillips screwdriver. So next what we want to do is we want to carefully set down the LCD screen off to the side. And we're going to want to take our tweezers and bring this connector over for the home button touch ID. So it's a little hard to show the connector down in there, but it's right there. Make sure to connect it right there and grab our tweezers and set this part on top. Make sure that snaps down in where it holds it and you're all set for reassembly. To reassemble the screen, grab your screen and carefully pick up a little bit. Be careful not to pick up too much because of the home button touch ID and cable. And what we need to do is we need to get the top started in here first with the screen held at a slight angle like that. Once this is popped in properly, what we can do is we can just start setting the screen down and just kind of work your way down from the top down and check, make sure that it's in all the way around like that. And go ahead and put your two screws back in the bottom right there with the Torx screwdriver. Now that your screws are in the bottom, go ahead and let's power the phone on. Make sure that everything's working. From all of us here at Scandatech, we want to say thanks for buying our kit. Thanks for watching.